What's good, YouTube? It's Roderick Martez back again with another video. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel this morning. From the title, you guys already know what this video is about, period. Um, before we get into it, make sure you guys, you know, take a look at the new area. Like, what? Got the tapestry, the lights, the pillows, the blanket. A little basic, but you know, it's cute. It's a whole vibe. Nonetheless, make sure you guys subscribe, like, and turn on the post notifications so you know when I post a video. Um, also, I really, really, really enjoy reading your comments. I want to know what you guys think about the situations that I talk about. I want to hear your opinions, outlooks on life, and different things that you go through. Um, and I really just want to talk to you guys and engage with the people who support me because I want to support you guys too. Um, so, let's get into this video. Okay, y'all, this is a lot. So before we even get into the video and all of that, I think it's important to let you guys know for context um, how I grew up and just, you know, my upbringing. So in short, um, I grew up in a two-parent household. Um, my dad was incarcerated from the ages of five to eight and then from 13 to present. Um, I grew up pretty privileged. We had a lot of money. Um, we don't have it anymore because of extenuating circumstances, but that was the case. So let's talk about how I came out. <laughs> so we have to start when I was 16 years old. When I was 16, I was having a conversation with my best friend at the time and I was texting her and I told her like, I think I'm bi. And it was so random because like I had been thinking about it for a while. Um, you know how when people constantly say something to you and call you names, you start to believe it. And I'm not trying to like give a sob story or anything, but like growing up, me and my dad didn't have the best relationship. So my dad would say things like, um, oh, you're acting like a faggot or you're doing this and you're doing you're doing that like you're you're gay or he would he would do it to like ridicule me. And, you know, I guess that would be his form of like discipline or chastising me or telling me that I wasn't good enough or not tough enough, um, which I know that's not true now, like. I'm definitely good enough. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to prove anything to anybody, but my people are proud of me. And if they're not, they're fucking stupid. Sorry for the language on YouTube, but I am literally doing that thing. I am that nigga and I am that one, never that two. Nonetheless, um, talking about my coming out story, I was texting my uh, best friend Autumn that and that night, not thinking about it, I gave my little sister my laptop. Now, y'all know how uh, iCloud is connected to all your devices, so your messages show up on everything. So my little sister was over my aunt's house with my granny and my mom. So she's going through my messages. I don't know why. She's just a nosy ass sister. Nosy as fuck. Anyway, so she shows my mom the messages between me and Autumn, and I was like, I'm bisexual. So... That's all I really know that happened. That's all I really know was talked about. I'm sure that my mom told my granny who's right there because everybody started acting weird after it. But my mom came back home. Mom and sister got home. I was in there watching TV. It's all, it's normal. Everybody's acting normal. Kennedy gives me my laptop back. Um, after the food is ready, my mom is like, hey, Roderick, so what's all that gay stuff that you were talking about? Mm hmm. And I, oh, <laughs> when I tell y'all that I was shook, <laughs> I didn't know what she was talking. I mean, I knew what she was talking about, but I was confused as to how she even knew. So she says the homosexual stuff that was in your messages. I said, oh, no, I think you have the wrong one. She says, no, 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 you were talking to Autumn and you said that you were bisexual and blah, 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 blah. And you were so sure about it in your messages. At that point, I was speechless. I had nothing to say because you told me. <laughs> You're telling me something new about myself. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I was, just, I was speechless at that point. So... I was just like, oh, yeah, you know, it's just how I'm feeling right now and blah, blah, blah. And that was just the end of it. She walked in the room. I didn't really like this. 
I didn't I didn't like this because me and my mom are super close. We're super close. And I feel like there was just a disconnect for that whole week and then everything went back to normal. But by that time, I didn't I didn't like her reaction to it. So I had convinced myself that I was just going through a phase and that's what I told her. I'm so sorry. I have to like um uh, I have to fix my nose because I have allergies and yeah. Oh, this is gross. Okay, so after I told my mom and my little sister that it was just a phase, you know, I still continued to explore. I mean, I definitely took a little break right then, but I continued to explore. I found out what Jacked was. I found out what Grinder was. You know, it was it was pretty interesting to like a 16, 17 year old. Um, I even like had a little meetup once. Um, it wasn't the best experience, but yeah. After another experience down the line, I realized, okay, well, this is something that I actually like. And I don't really know how to, you know, how to internalize that or I don't know what this means. So by the time I got to college, it was just like, oh, my God, like I'm seeing all of these cute people, <laughs> specifically cute boys. And I'm just like, oh, I definitely want to talk to them. I want to see what they're want to see what they're about. But at the time, like, I got so involved and so wrapped up with, like, student organizations and all that that I began to build a name for myself. So, of course, just like they did when I was in elementary, middle school, and high school, of course, people had their suspicions because of, like, just my mannerisms and, like, who I am as a person. But in college, you know, people thought that people would say little stuff. I didn't really care because <laughs> I was that nigga anyway. But people... People would say little stuff that got to me, so I, I couldn't really explore as openly as I wanted to. I couldn't really do a lot of stuff, but things would always happen when I got drunk, like always. I think that I became like the true version of myself when I got drunk. I was messing with girls and I was messing with guys, like, and people have people would tell me about it, like days that are, oh yeah, you know, you were kind of real close, hugged up with Mark, or you know, you were. You were doing this and doing that. And I was like, oh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Because I, I like at that point, I didn't really want people to know. But um, I had to really like sit down and talk to myself and just think like, OK, well, you're doing all of this. You're that guy. Like you should be able to be yourself and like who you want to like and all that stuff. Um, This was from, you know, being 18 to I didn't really come out for real for real until I was 21. So I had three whole years to just sit on these feelings and all of this stuff just happened in between and me finding out what I really liked, finding out what I was into sexually, all of that stuff. I had a whole girlfriend talk to a guy for a little bit. I've never really had a whole relationship with a guy, but nonetheless, like I really, I like, I like dudes. Like I think that they're attractive and I want to, I'm sexually attracted to dudes. So while being sexually attracted to girls, so in my eyes, you know, a lot of what made being me or coming out hard was the fact that I was so involved, like with student organizations. Uh, my freshman year, towards the end of the school year, I realized that, you know, I wanted to pledge. I wanted to be in a fraternity. Um, so I did it. But this this made it hard because of how I thought that, like, my brothers were going to... Um, perceive me. By the way, I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Um, but I thought that like they would view me differently when I came out, which was totally different from what I thought. But I thought they would view me differently. Um, then I was in a whole bunch of other student organizations. I thought all of those people would view me differently. So I never really like wanted to like publicize what I was doing. And there came a point in time when I was up at school that I just I wasn't happy. Like, and I don't think that that's all because I wasn't quite being myself when it came to my sexuality. I just wasn't happy up there. But I knew that I had to leave in order to be who I wanted to be. And in hindsight, like, I definitely thought about if I came out, what would happen at school? In my eyes, I thought that the reputation and the image that I built up for myself would be diminished because of my sexuality or me being this and that's because I've had some type of personal negative connotation with being bisexual and like I said before 
that definitely was not the case. Nonetheless, I did end up leaving um, school. I went to Central Michigan University. I left Central to go to University of Michigan Dearborn because it's 12 minutes away from my house. It's cheaper. I can save money and I can work at a job that like pays pretty well, but I was never going to make that much money um, up at Central. Anyway, one of the many nights when I was celebrating my 21st birthday, I went to uh, this club in Royal Oak, Michigan with um, my line brother, Jaquan. So my phone is on the table, we're drinking or whatever, and it rings. And it's somebody uh, who I used to deal with in the past. And then he sends a message like, I think he said like, what are you doing, babe? But his name, it was, a, it was definitely a male name on the phone. So my line brother sees it and he's like, Roderick, what is this? So I pull him into the bathroom and I'm just like, okay, this is this. And I just, I lay it all out for him. I tell him everything. And he's like, oh, okay. Kind of figured, but okay. And that was it. So after that, like, I literally was like, okay. So the main people who I didn't want to tell, which was my fraternity brothers. And mind you, like, my line brother, this line brother is one of the ones who, like, I love all of my brothers, but... You know, just in certain group situations, you know who that person who really who really rocks with you is. And that's him. Like, that's probably in my life. Like, he'll probably be like my best man. For sure. Anyway, um, so after that, it was kind of like, OK, well, I know that I can talk to anybody about this. So I had a conversation with my mom. And I'm just like, okay, mom, remember when, when I was 16 and all that stuff happened and I said it was just a phase? Well, it's not. And I think that this is what I like and this is what it's going to be. And at that point, like, I knew that my mom didn't really care because we had had little, little conversations about sexuality. And I had always, I had mentioned it to her a few times, like in between the time of being 16 and 21. And she was like, oh, well, I mean, if you like it, I love it, whatever it is, blah, 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 blah. So she was just like, okay, that's fine. So at that point, that was all I needed. I started to, I literally just like, as the days went by, all of like June of 2018 and July and August of 20, 2018, those were like the months that I started telling all the people that were important to me. I didn't come out though until um, February 5th of 2019. So during the time when I was telling everybody, I went to the gay club for the first time. I like... Um, when I went out of town, I like stopped at a few like gay bars and they were cool. And I just liked the vibe. I just liked the vibe. And the best thing about it and like the, the part that really like helped me was being in an area where I was accepted. No matter what part of the spectrum, LGBTQ spectrum I was on, I was accepted. And that was something that I really never felt. I mean, like people accepted me for being Roderick and all the great things that I do, but people never accepted all of me with my sexuality. When it came to like my sexuality in the heterosexual world, everybody was just like, oh, why you're so feminine and you're so this and everything has to follow like societal norms. And that's just not cool. Like, I, I love the fact that when I went when I went to like the clubs or like met gay people or bi people, lesbian people, they all were so accepting of letting me figure out who I wanted to be and doing what's best for me. And I, I really, I really love that. Um, so yeah, fast forward, new year comes around. I wanted to make a video. I wanted to make a video and I wanted to make a whole like Instagram post. I had done a photo shoot in December, wanted to use those for my coming out story. Um, I was scared. I was supposed to do it on uh, January 1st. And I was so scared. Like, I just, even though I'd left school already and, you know, I had nothing to worry about, all the people who were close to me knew, I was just scared to, like, make that public statement. Uh, so I ended up, like, not doing it. So sad. But um, February rolls around. I had these pictures on my phone. And I was doing a, um, I was doing an internship for the T Association of Fraternal Leadership and Values, uh, which is, and they do a conference every single year for Greek life um, at higher inst higher education institutions. I was one of their conference interns, mind you. It's the largest like Greek conference like in all of the United States, the world, pretty much because most other countries don't really have fraternities and sororities, um, for the most part, but. 
Yeah, it's the largest Greek com largest Greek Greek conference, and I was one of the interns. So I'm sitting there, like taking all of this in, like, oh my gosh, like I'm an intern at a profound, like a profound conference. Like I'm just doing so much of my life. I'm in school. There's nothing anybody can tell me. I'm cute. I have all of my ducks in a row. And like, why can't I be myself? Who am I hiding from? I already told the people who matter to me. At that point, it was just like, I might as well come out. I might as well be who I'm going to be so I can know the people who are going to rock with me and the people who aren't. So at that point, I can cut you off because you don't need to be in my life. If you're not going to be there for me, then you don't need to be in my life. Like if you're not going to be there for my betterment and my improvement, you can go like literally good fucking bye. So at that point, I literally was laying in the bed. <laughs> I was kind of stressed out um, at the point. I think it was like my medication or something. But yeah, I was kind of stressed out. So I just simply posted the pictures with the whole like statement. I'll read it to you guys. Um, one second. Six hours later. <sighs> okay, so I made this post um, on Instagram on February 5th. <sighs> It was 7.20 p.m. So mind you, I wasn't even like following my normal rules of like when I should post because I usually post at 5 p.m. Exactly. Every time. <laughs> but I didn't. I was just, I was laying in the bed and I was like, okay, like everybody has to know at this point, like I'm really that guy. So I'm going to tell everybody. So that's what I did. So it reads, I told myself that 2019 is going to be different. That I will live my life to the fullest extent and not let any barriers or fears hold me back from living in my truth comfortably and unapologetically. I'm bisexual. As confident and self-assured as I may seem, it took me a very long time to admit, admit to myself and understand what it meant. These past few months have taught me that if you don't love and appreciate the person who you are, no one else will and you will never be truly happy. I want to say thank you to all of my friends who have been there for me as I went through this interesting journey in my life. Most importantly, thank you to my whole heart, my mom, uh, for encouraging me to be myself, no matter what anybody else has to say. And positive vibes coming out, LGBT, be yourself, pride. And I put the rainbow <laughs> because I thought it was cute. But um. Nonetheless, I think after that, like, I had a really, really, really stressful, like, post 30 minutes. Um, the mall was connected to our hotel in Indianapolis, so I literally walked to the mall and bought, like, $200 worth of stuff just because, like, I needed to get my mind off of it. And I didn't return it either. <laughs> like, I just needed to, in a way, celebrate this moment, but also internalize what I had just done. When I came back to the room... It was about an hour later. I'd already gotten 500 likes. And I think it was probably at about 70 comments at this point, which eventually turned into 1,782 likes and 235 comments, all of people supporting me in the decision that I made to publicize my sexuality. Um, to this day, I still get um, people hitting me up about, just talking about them and them encouraging me to keep going and, you know, congratulating me on unapologetically being who I am. And that means a lot because I never really knew that I could influence people, influence people by my decisions in that way. Or not necessarily that I never knew that I could or had the potential to, but I with that decision, yeah, I wanted everybody to know and I wanted it to be on a big platform and all of that, but I didn't think that I was going to get the response that I did. It was it was kind of like I thought that everybody would care. N nobody really cared. So, um, so you're coming out the closet, right? You're going to make an announcement. Okay, you said you gay. Okay, we waiting on our announcement. Is that the announcement? Because uh, for us, it was like, are you coming out? <laughs> Not yet? Uh, 
every now and then. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let us know when you come out, okay? Oh, you made an announcement? Oh, okay. <laughs> Dang. Because it wasn't locked. We've been in this, though. Like, there was nothing really holding me back. And, you know, I have to recognize that my situation is not like everybody else's. I I don't have the same circumstances. I have different parents. I have different family. I have different, uh, you know, financial restrictions than everybody else. So when I talk to people about, like, coming out and all that, you have to be mindful of the situation that you're in. You have to be mindful of what's going to happen when you do this. For me, I had to really think about it. And I I came to the conclusion that nothing would happen. My mom loves me unapologetically. My dad is incarcerated. He can't choke me out from in where he's at. Um, shit. <laughs> like, after, after my mom, it was like, I really didn't care about anybody or what they had to say. So, um... Yeah, <laughs> that was that. And I, I went to my first Pride on my, um, for Memorial Day, as you guys saw, like I made a vlog about it. Uh, then I went to like the first Detroit Pride that I had ever been to. And that was really emotional for me because it was on my birthday. And my mom, she actually showed up too. So it just, it really was like touching for me that I have all of these people here to support me. And I hope that this was enough, but like I didn't really have like a negative coming out. Like my coming out was more so for my like personal like development. Like and I feel like that's how it should be. Like you learn so much about yourself when you just go through with the things that you innately want to do. And through this journey, I I don't it hasn't even been a year yet, but I've learned so much things about the person who I want to become, the things that are really important to me. And that just, it just means a lot. And yeah, I wanted to um, have my mom here on the video, actually, because I wanted to like get some of her thoughts, but she'll be on the next one. Um, so yeah, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people ask me, do I really think that I'm bi or can a person be bi? I think that, um, yeah, like I, I still say that I'm bisexual. Uh, I think that I'm in a boy phase right now only because I never really had the freedom to do what I wanted or entertain guys publicly. And I think that's why I haven't messed with a girl. Like I haven't like actively like talked to a girl romantically in about a year now. And I don't think that that's because I I'm not attracted I'm not attracted to them, but excuse me. I just I think that there's something new right now, and I still like yeah we can talk about other stuff and like my interests later. But I really just wanted to get that off my chest, and I'm so happy that I got a chance to like actually talk to like talk to you guys about it, um, and put it out there how I actually felt. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. I know I probably kind of just rambled on, but I just, I, I, like I said, I just really wanted to get that off my chest uh, and actually like speak about it. Please, please, please let me know down below how you guys feel about my story. I really want to hear some of your stories. Um, Just talk to me, man. Like I really want to um, interact with you guys. So remember, follow me on all my social media platforms. Everything is Roderick Martez, R-O-D-E-R-I-C-M-A-R-T-E-Z. That is it. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Be productive, whatever you want to do, whether that be music, TV, you want to be a journalist, you want to get straight A's this semester, you want to do anything, please just start now. I want you to like be the best versions of yourself. And that's just it. And like my girls love... <laughs> like my girl Zoe said, okay, okay. <laughs> There's only one you. And if you don't be you, then nobody else will. Thank you for watching. And that's it.